Hey guys, I'm Charles Neal. And as you can well see, I didn't come dressed to film the day. But we won't let that bother us. Because out on YouTube and out on the internet, we've got a little thing out there showing you how to carve these flame finials. But what we want to focus on today is the little rosette right here. Simply a floral design, kind of looks like a daisy or a sunflower or whatever. And it's really not difficult. So we're going to show you how to do it. It's pretty simple. And I think when once you see it, you won't be scared to give one a shot. Let's go carve one. Now here's what I've got. You can see the blank. I simply turned it to fit the curve in my gooseneck. And in this, in this case, this is this one is uh, two and five eighths across. <clears throat> it's eight and a half inches around. Now what I got to do is divide it out into equal segments. That's not difficult. At eight and a half inches, all I got to do, you can see we're eight and a half inches. So I'm just simply going to mark it. At my start point, half of eight and a half, of course, is four and a quarter. Half of four and a quarter is two and an eighth. Half of two and an eighth is an inch and a sixteenth. Now I'm only marking one side. And the reason for that is, is I've got a nice center finder. And what it will do is it's you, it works on round things find my centers and I'm just going to lay it out. Now a quick easy way to check all of this is to take a compass and set it up on each point and just come around and double check that you're equal. And all your spacing. All right, once you've got your spacing laid out and, and you're sure you're correct, just come back and draw you a line. Now, if you don't have one of these fancy center finders, just carry your measurements right on around. That's okay. Now, each one of these is going to represent the center of a petal. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we need to get in the middle of here because we're going to have we're going to use this as a reference line. Now all I'm going to do is eyeball it because close counts in carvings. Once I have that, I'm going to come back and I want to. Denote that line. Now here's something you want to be careful about, and that is, is that you want to make sure that you have some way of not getting, not confusing yourself when we start the carving. Is this is center of a petal? This is the center of a petal. Just something so we don't get confused. We're going now what I'm this is not exactly it, but the one I found that denotes this on this particular rosette is a, a number 25 fishtail gouge. And all I'm doing, I want you to watch this, is I'm going to go from my this point right here to what's going to be the center of my petal. I just want to set my chisel in here and make sure, because this has got a rounded surface, I just want to make sure that I'm coming in where I need to be. Make yourself a pretty good deep cut. Get down about 16th if you can. The one other thing I want to mention here is this is a face grain turning. This is not an end grain. Now you can immediately see how the pedal gets formed. Now 
Then you just walk all the way around it. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. Petals laid out. Now, now I did this on purpose because I wanted to show it to you. Make sure you're really careful when you're doing this in where you're, because you're on this rounded surface that your chisel is coming in where you want. Be careful with that. And the reason is if you don't, you're going to get a smaller petal. Now, you can also carve this whole shape if you want. Turning it's much easier. And in the event that this would happen, and I'm not real happy about it, I can also go back and turn this face back down, start over. All right, this is called a sweep wing parting tool. It's not very, it just looks like a bird's wings. Now you can use this tool or you could also just use a regular, any, any other kind of rounded chisel. But all I want to do is get right in here and kind of separate and make my secondary petal. And I'm going to do that just by simply taking a little notch out. Now go easy here because if you really get real aggressive, you can take a pretty good hunk out of here. And I'm just going to walk it around. Now I'm sighting down on this to make sure that I'm pretty even as I can get. But in the event that I'm off a little bit, I can actually take this and come back in here and just kind of clean it a little bit. And I'm going to move right on around. Then I'm just going to come back with a little flat chisel and clean that out. Just enough to get myself a good little notch in there. If I'm not deep enough, I can ease, you know, you're not going to get all this in one pass or one, one thing. So just, you know, ease, you know, sneak up on this thing. And once you've done, just this is just a little straight skewed chisel. Nice and sharp. You know, one of the things with carving is, is it's, your chisels have just got to be sharp. You know, being able to strop them and get them really nice and sharp, that's it. So all I got to do is do that little back cut. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to start just on an angle taking this end toward my pedal. And what my object of my game is, is just to side cut that down on an angle, rolling with the, with the curvature of the piece. Not hard at all. The cut in the pedal actually gives you a nice little stop in case you try to go too far. Now, when you get done, make sure that the center part of this little V is, is, is nice and straight. Make sure it's going in towards your center. You'll know your chisel sharp when you make a cut. You want it to show up shiny. You want it to give a nice wet look. There's nothing worse than dull ch ch carving chisels. They just don't work. Once that's done, let's go ahead and get a little bit of this other side just so you get the gist of the thing. All right, and of course I would just keep on going around. Then here in the center, I want to give just a little bit of a de better definition to a pedal. So just simply taking a little V, veiner or a little V chisel, I want to take a relatively good little notch out of there. And I want to kind of round it in. All right, guys. I wanted to show you this. Because carving chisels are expensive. I understand that. 
but you can take the same number 25 uh, fishtail gouge and you can actually cut these little notches in here separate works just great now one of the things you're going to notice is that we textured the center and the little outer notches a couple ways of doing that we use a dremel here but I want to show you this. You can take something as simple as a small nail punch and just dimple it all over. Works nice. Or as we did, use a drum. Now a nice thing to have to come in and just try to kind of clean up a little bit and kind of touch up your edges and corners and get all the little fuzzies and whatever off. Now one thing I want to tell you, don't get crazy sand in your carving. The little carving marks and whatever that are left in here from where you, you hand cut it, leave them. It gives background, it gives texture that makes it really look nice and the other thing it does is it lets somebody know you hand carved it. If you don't have a little file, emery board little cheap fingernail that come in medium and fines. And of course you can take a pair of scissors or a knife and just cut them off to whatever shape you want and just get in here. The other thing I want to show you is that when you're doing these, finish can really play a big part of it. Now what I've got here is just a die. And what it's going to, what you want to do is when you whether you're using a die like I am here or stain, is to get it on here, clean, clean it off good. If necessary, come back after you're done and sand your flat surfaces a little bit, removing some of your stain and color. And then once it's dry, do it again. What, or use a glaze if you know what that is. What a glaze does, or this, is that you want your background, like your stippled area, in here and your center and your little notches in your leaves, or your petals, you want them to show up just a little bit darker than the rest of it. And it will give you nice definition. It, it really helps to define it. It's rosette. Nothing difficult, nothing hard. Give it a try. I think you'll I think you'll have fun doing it and you might learn a little something and it'll probably inspire you to move on to some bigger and better carvings. I'm Charles Neal. Catch you later.